Today we hear from one of my favorite books from the Old Testament, the book of Jonah. Nineveh was one of the oldest and most populous city in the ancient Assyrian Empire. Its ruins are located on the east bank of the Tigris River opposite of uh, the modern city of Mosul in Iraq. The Ninevites, the Ninevites were a great empire known for their ruthlessness. They were sworn enemies of the Jewish people. Each despised the other, and yet Jonah, a Jew, was sent to Nineveh, sent by God to preach to them. The Ninevites were determined to end Israelite civilization in a few years, but it was them who God sent Jonah to. Jonah definitely did not want to go to them, but made sure that he did in spite of Jonah's efforts to avoid the task to which God had sent him. After the episode with the whale, Jonah finally ends up on the shores of Nineveh. He went to them and repented. They repented of their evil ways. We know the story well. They acted immediately on God's word. Jonah was there only a day in what was to be a three-day journey. And that's what I want you to understand on this Sunday. That's the key to understanding what the Lord is trying to speak to us this weekend. On hearing God's word proclaimed to them by Jonah, they acted immediately and changed their ways. Today in the second reading from St. Paul, he's proclaiming a similar message. He says, I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out for the world in its present form is passing away. Let that sink in. Like Jonah, many people have a prop propensity to procrastinate the things of God, to put it off, almost as to say, well, I'll get to it. My prayer life, the sacraments, going to mass, a relationship with the Lord. Yes, it's important, but I have other things that are very important as well. And so we tend to put it off. We should, however, consider what the Lord is thinking about that. The theme presented today in the gospel, Peter and Andrew were grown men who were in the fishing business. They experienced God's call and immediately dropped everything, left their business and followed Jesus. No procrastination there. They didn't say, well, we're going to see how this all pans out. We're going we're gonna to sit back and see who this guy really is. I'm not sure if I can commit yet. But Jesus in today's gospel account walked a little further and then meets James and his brother John, their father Zebedee, who also were fishermen. And Jesus, is, Jesus calls them immediately. And Jesus calls them and immediately they drop their nets. They leave their father Zebedee and they follow Christ. Being here in Rome these days, I see so many young men studying for the priesthood, young men who have been recently ordained. It's edifying. Men from all over the world, priests from all over the world who are walking the streets of Rome, hurrying to get to class. I see a lot of young women religious as well. But I want to say this Sunday is that perhaps in your family, you have a family member that in a less dramatic way than we hear in the Gospels are experiencing a similar call to God. A similar call from God. Could you respond as those first disciples did? In one way or another, we are all called to follow God. We all have a vocation. But what about the Jonas among us? It's very likely that some young men or women are feeling God's inviting call. A call to go into this very modern world, a world much like Nineveh, with God's message. I know there are young men in our parish and in campus ministry who are hearing God's word to serve him as a priest. I also know some young women experiencing a similar thought about being a religious sister or in some other way of serving the church. 
There are young men and women who are hearing God's call, God's invitation to serve him in other special ways. God's call is not limited. Today we're bombarded with social media presenting young men and women as self-centered, self-absorbed, selfish, pleasure-seeking. But we all know of young men and women in the military who are serving our country in very self-sacrificing ways. We've seen accounts of young men and women in, on their spring breaks that they desire to go and serve the poor or to travel to the Dominican Republic. In our own parish, we will travel to uh, the Dominican Republic to serve with Blue Missions, helping to build aqueducts in order to bring running water to communities that, are, that have suffered from poverty and misfortune. There are adults in our own parish who sacrifice their time to teach and to lead others to the faith. Small communities growing in faith, experiencing growth, not only in numbers, but in the quality of people. All that being said, our faith tells us that by our baptism, we're baptized into the priesthood of Jesus Christ. In the sacrament of confirmation, we have been anointed by the Holy Spirit. Do you feel the Holy Spirit called to go into a world like Nineveh? And how this world wants to distract us, wants to pull us away from the things of God. We can all be edified by the fact that many young men and women have come to realize that special calling, that grace in their lives, and then responding to that call. I also want to acknowledge all the adults who have, are having a conversion in our own parish. Adults that, through different ministries and different apostolates, Different activities are allowing themselves to grow closer to the Lord and gearing their focus on what's really what really matters, placing God first. Today's words are not just pretty words. I want to challenge you. Just as Jonah challenged the Ninevites, being a priest, a pastor, a shepherd of souls is not easy. Bringing Christ's message to those around us is not easy either. God hasn't given us a how-to manual or some agency in which we can refer to people. Oh, go see this guy. No, God is calling us to bring his presence to individuals, something that we can only do individually. I want to invite you personally. We must be his hands and feet. We live in profound connectedness and radical complicity in our world. Jesus cries out to us and tells us that a better world is within our reach. It's within our grasp. The reign of God is at hand, he tells us. A better world begins when we begin to change our own personal lives, placing God at the center of our lives, acknowledging once and for all that I must renounce all things, that I need to drop everything Everything that distracts me, blocks me from a deeper relationship with the Lord. He tells us, reform your lives and believe in the gospel. Believe in the good news. Taking life by the yard is hard. But life taken by inch, slowly and with purpose and with structure is easier. Take life as it comes to us one day at a time, a moment at a time. Expect perfect happiness in the next life, only to be reasonably joyful in this life now. This is the only way we can deal with reality, with what we are facing. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the gospel for today, for the readings for this weekend, if you want to change the world, are you willing first to change your own life, change ourselves, how can I have the energy to change the mess around us unless I at least have the energy to change myself and to stick with it? It's so easy for me to complain about this person or, or about this situation. The call of Jesus to 12 individuals, the call we just heard in the Gospel Today account, is not an issue only to those 12 Jewish men 2,000 years ago. It's an insistent call, a call that is daily. It's an urgent call a demanding call that comes down through the centuries, 2,000 years in this church of ours, to you 
to me, to all of us here, to all of you, called by God to receive the bread of life and then to leave this church building on mission. We have to leave the pews like the 12 disciples to change the world, but it has to be by first changing our own lives. For the simple truth is that when we do in fact change our lives, you have begun to change the world. I've seen it so many times. You want real change in your life, in your job, your marriage, your relationship with your kids, leave behind all the nonsense once and for all. Follow Jesus, give your complete heart to him. What are you waiting for? To see how this all plans out? Oh, I'm gonna see if this is really what it's all about. It might be too late. What is God whispering to you deep down within your heart? Do you hear it? You might be ignoring it. So to what and to whom do you want to give your life to? My brothers and sisters, change begins today. Change yourself and you'll be able to change the world.